Hello world, welcome. Cold Electric Labs, live from Austin, Texas. And at this time we have reproduced Nikola Tesla's single wire power transmission, as shown in this patent for the electrical transformer. It consists of a cinder or transmitter step up coil on the left and a step down receiver coil on the right. The transmitter coil consists of a two turn primary and a flat spiral secondary driven by a high frequency oscillator. And the high voltage output from that comes down this single wire into the center of the receiver coil to power lamps and motors. So the uh, cinder coil puts out high frequency, high voltage alternating current output and the wire leads to the center of the receiver coil. The receiver coil is a mirror image uh, sized coil tuned or resonant with the sender. So you're taking a high frequency high voltage alternating current at the transmitter and stepping it down into high frequency low voltage alternating current in the receiver. Mine is driven by Master Evo's solid state Tesla oscillator circuit. The primary is excited by unipolar voltage impulses at 133 kilocycles. I'm also using a full wave Averminko plug rectifier to charge a 27 volt 10 farad ultra capacitor to power a DC fan motor and some lights. It is all custom. Another uh, variation of this is what Nikola Tesla used to do the demonstration to the patent inspector. Uh, he's using sectional tubes uh, evacuated to low pressure which is analogous to fluorescent lights. I'll be uh, transmitting through those as a wire also. And I like the single wire transmission because it's quite similar to the uh, wireless power transmission setup. You've got a sender coil on the left, receiver coil on the right, two turn primary, flat spiral secondary, driven by a high frequency oscillator to power lamps and motors. But instead of the single wire, you've got uh, conductive terminal spheres on the sender and the receiver side and uh, you're transmitting power through stray capacitance with earth. You'll notice in this drawing the coils are wound in opposite directions to each other. Uh, these are also very similar to uh, the scalar experimental kit produced by Constantine Mayo. Another unique feature I'm using is from this Nikola Tesla patent for electromagnets. And this is what's come to be called a bifiler pancake. I'm using this for my secondary coil. So you'll see my sender and receiver coils here wound in opposite directions. And let's check out what it looks like. Okay, so let's try just a quick basic overview of the setup I've got going on now. This is the sender or transmitter coil. DC power supply powering the oscillator, function generator is timing the oscillations, and the four channel oscilloscope is showing us the music. Here on the receiver side, you can see the signal rising up on the scope there. So the high voltage primary is coming in at 1.3 kilovolts in the Low voltage step down secondary is at 28 volts peak to peak. And back over on the transmitter side, 1.04 kilovolts peak to peak. And again, over here on the receiver side, 1.29 kilovolts peak to peak. So there's a transmission line voltage step up. Now the cool thing about these supercapacitors is they isolate the load from the rest of the system so that you can run inductive loads on this without throwing the whole thing out of resonance. Let's uh, check this guy out. Whoa, is that working? Kinda, except no, the volts are dropping, plummeting. Oops, so this, uh, Radiator fan used to be these things run at like 12 volts 20 25 amps So uh, it's a bit too strong of a load This is a smaller load and I like it 
because it demonstrates that you've got a resistive load with the LED lights and an inductive load. So yeah, this thing can be run. I read a lot about how with single wire power transmission stuff, it's easy to run resistive loads and yet inductive loads throw the whole thing off. Uh, the coil basically becomes part of the tuned resonant circuit and we train wrecks everything. I've, I've, I've tried it plenty. But with these supercapacitors, it's kind of like a water tower where it's holding an extra charge. You're just running the load off that so it doesn't you know, throw a monkey wrench in the gears of the resonant system. Right now, looks like the fan's running at about 17 volts, 1 amp. My uh, cinder coil is running at about 30 volts, 4 amps. So. We've got a very low efficiency rating. It's like 10 or 20% efficiency. You know, you're putting in 120 watts and getting out 17, 18. That's not so great. What we need to look more into is power factor correction. There's a new active power factor correction development boards available. You can get them on Mouser and whatnot. And uh, if something could automatically get the phase relations of those voltage and current waves in line for me, that would just be real convenient. So we'll check on that. So with the single wire power transmission, going from the step up transmitter coil on the left to the step down receiver coil on the right, into this assembly of supercapacitors, is running this inductive load, a fan. Well, we've got inductive and resistive, the fan with the LEDs, what a perfect demo. Being generous, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a pyramid of light. Okay, so on the left is the transmitter coil. It's a uh, center output. It's going into this uh, left fluorescent bulb. Connected by a wire to the right fluorescent bulb. Right on down. And into the center of the receiver coil. Uh, that's low voltage AC output. Goes into this uh, Abramenko style uh, full wave rectifier. That's going into this assembly of supercapacitors. And that is run in this old radiator fan. Got a pulse width modulator on there. It still is a bit tricky to uh, get it to run steadily off this. Bulbs are lit. Recently learned that the bottom of this supercapacitor has red lights. Trace is the cinder coil, the yellow trace is the receiver coil. 1.7 kilovolts from the cinder, 0.04 receiver. And basically, this fan going by sound, whether or not it's uh, running steadily. Okay, well that seems to be in a steady state. There we are, Nikola Tesla's single wire power transmission through fluorescent tubes, running a motor. Now, just sit back and enjoy the light show. I noticed that when there's no load on the receiver, the light moves from left to right bottom of the left tube, up to the middle, down to the bottom of the right tube. And when there is a load in the receiver, as shown now, they both converge in the top center from the lower left and right corners.
Check out their YouTube channel. Some of my favorite contributors, Ben Hyde, Electric Universe Eyes, Robert Hawthorne, Andy Hall, Don Scott, Orion Energy, and Sapphire Electric Sun. I see y'all. Also, a big shout outs to the eMedia Press folks people, Eric Dollard, GG Brock Labs, AM Innovations. I appreciate the work y'all are doing. I've been checking out y'all's papers. Dr. Constantine Mayo, the same. And a big thanks to Master Evo for his wonderful open source solid state impulse oscillator circuit. If you'd like to know some of my build specifications and uh, specifics, check out opensourceenergy.org. I've got a member workbench there. My tag is Cold Electric. Uh, Master Evo has also got some work on there under Evo Stars. If you register for an account, then you can uh, check out our notes. These efforts are dedicated to two great bodhisattvas, Nikola Tesla and Wal Thornhill. And also to you for watching. Thanks, guys. <laughs>